Hey everybody, I'm Colby from Sanitarium Productions. We're back again today with another G.I. Joe toy review. Today we're taking a look at the three pack from the 50th anniversary line Sneak Attack. Featuring a new Dusty figure. Well, new figure is kind of relative here. Uh, a different Dusty figure. <laughs> Bazooka and a Firefly figure. Uh, these have this really cool kind of bluish camo deco going on. Uh, which is um, unique to say the least. Not something uh, I would associate with either Dusty or Bazooka. But that's mainly because, you know, they're kind of iconic colors from the cartoon. Just kind of stick in your mind and leave you with a cool impression. Uh, Firefly doesn't look that much different. But um, we'll take a look individually and see that for ourselves, I guess, in a few minutes. So our plan is just go ahead and unbox this thing and take the figures out and do a quick review of all of them and let y'all see them up close and personal. So stick around. Here we have the G.I. Joe 50th Anniversary Sneak Attack 3-Pack featuring Dusty, Bazooka, and Firefly. Uh, this set looks really nice in the box. The back of it is pretty much the same as the rest of these uh, three packs from the 50th anniversary line. Uh, very basic. No more file cards on the back. Three figures and 27 accessories it says. Kind of cool. Let's go ahead and open this thing up. A single piece of tape on the corner. A couple of file cards are already coming out. That's now recycling material. As is standard with uh, all these 50th anniversary line three packs, we've got this uh, nice blue starburst background that is now recycling. So all the uh, cards, file cards and all come in the pack. Uh, these are all kind of mixed up here, so let's see what we got here. Uh, Dusties. Uh, like all the rest of these that we've seen so far, uh, there are two cards per character, and each card has two sides and a different language on each side. So, pretty standard stuff. And we've got the Firefly. And our Anti-Armor Missile Specialist, also known as Bazooka. Pretty cool. And here are the figures that come in the set. So let's go ahead and uh, get them out and have a look at them. Like most of these uh, three packs that we've been coming across, uh, these things are held in place by these little rubber bands on the back of the packaging. So I'm just going to go ahead and uh, slice them open. And we'll just uh, start over here with uh, Firefly, I guess. around his look around his knee joints and see what he comes with here there are two of these little landmine things it 
a rather cool looking backpack. The figure stand, like the rest of the 50th anniversary, it has a nice raised logo for whichever faction I'm with, Cobra in this case, and it's painted a nice gold color to match the 50th line, and then the code name, so cool. And we'll assume that this pistol here, small pistol, and this assault rifle will go with Firefly. And then we'll move on to Mr. Bazooka. If we can get him out of the package. Again, trying to remove these rubber bands from the knee joints. Pretty nice looking figure so far. His figure stand, the G.I. Joe logo. His backpack. His bazooka rocket launcher. Helmet. And four of these little mystery things. Now we'll move on to Dusty. His finger stand. It looks like he's got a few more accessories. We've got a machine gun. Another machine gun. A machete knife. A pistol. His helmet, his cloth dust cover, I guess, and we've got this black gun that I think may actually go with uh, Bazooka, so I'm going to put it over there with him. Simply because the rest of those weapons are colored blue. And we also have a pair of goggles here. So that's all we got. So now more recycling material. And all the figures and accessories that we have. Pretty cool. We'll go ahead now and uh, zoom in on these things individually and uh, take a look at them up close and do a quick review of them. Up first we have Firefly. Go ahead and just stick his stand somewhere to the side here since no use really reviewing that. It's a normal stand. Uh, taking a look at the figure itself. 
comes in a slightly new camo pattern here. Um, and overall, the paint job looks really good. Color scheme works pretty well for him. He does have some uh, nice detail work in all of his clothing and everything. Uh, they've put the Cobra logo here in that nice gold color to go along with the rest of the 50th anniversary line. A lot of nice detail work here on his pouches. He's got his uh, traditional grenade belt. A very cool looking bomb strapped to his uh, bandolier there. And another one on the back there. That's a very cool little touch there. Pretty cool. Uh, articulation wise, these are the same as the rest of the 50th anniversary, so we expect them to be pretty well similar. And just checking them all out. Shoulder joint is the same. Uh, it has a ball and swivel, so moves up and down and goes 360 that way. The elbow joint, uh, although a little bit stiff, does the same thing, so it uh, bends and rotates. And his wrist rotates and it also bends, so he does have that extra point of articulation in his wrist, which is uh, very nice to include there. Uh, he's got the standard ab crunch, which is a little bit limited by his uh, bandoliers here, but not too badly. It does move side to side too if you need to. Uh, leg articulation, standard hip joint, double knee joint, and the ankle joint that rotates and moves. So, all standard articulation that we come to expect out of these. So It's a very nice looking figure. Uh, looking at the side here, he has a sheath on his uh, bottom of his boot here with a removable knife. This is pretty cool looking. It slips in there pretty easily and stays in place. Won't be coming out. He's got another looks like a uh, holster for his gun right there on the side. It does look like it's a little bit pinched in, so you may have to pry it out a little bit, but uh, let's take a look. He's got this uh, one small pistol that should fit right there on the side. We can get it to start. Thought I had it there. A little difficult to get in this one. I'm going to have to, uh, Take my X-Acto knife to see if I can pry that open. It looks like both pieces are kind of bent in a little bit. Let's see if that helps. There we go. So once you uh, spread the holster apart a little bit, the uh, pistol fits in there rather nicely. Nice and snug, it's not coming out, so it's a, a plus there. I don't know if it's just mine that's like that or if all of them come that way, but uh, a little bit, bit of a pain, but nothing we can't handle, I don't guess. Uh, looking at his weapons, he's got this really nice assault rifle. It's got some extra little paint apps applied to it. That's pretty cool. Big old silencer on the end of it. it. Appears to fit in his hand pretty easily. No problems with him holding it, so that's always cool. My focus jumped on me a little bit. Then we've got his backpack here. 
And this backpack actually looks really nice. Uh, there's a lot of intricate detail work here. There's some smoke grenades, some regular grenades, another couple of bombs, some more grenades down here at the bottom. So you've got the pineapple ones and the uh, traditional ones. Some kind of ropes or something at the top here. He's got an extra sheath here on the side with another knife that is removable. And it looks to be the same as the one that's on his boot. So you don't have to worry about which one goes where. Fits in there very snugly, so that's pretty awesome. Some more grenades and flare guns and stuff like that in here, so that's cool. Very nicely detailed backpack. Let's see how well it plugs into his back. Actually fits in there very easily, so nice. Then the other accessories he comes with are these two uh, landmine looking things in this nice red color uh, on the back of his backpack there's a little um i guess peg you might want to call it and these things if i can hold on to them just slip on top of there so you can actually store them on his back and they stack on top of each other like that so you can carry both of them on his back at one time so very cool Everything he comes with, he can carry it with one one hand tied behind his back, I guess you could say. So yeah, overall it's a nice looking figure. Very cool. I will point out that, uh, at least on mine here on the top of the head, there's a little bit of a burr left on where they join the plastic together at. Uh, that's sad to see that, but... Uh, it happens from time to time. I'm sure most of them aren't like that, but uh, you can take a little X-Acto knife and just trim that if you wanted to, which I probably will do, but it's there for the review, so we'll point it out anyway. So, Cool figure. Nice little update for Firefly. Up next we have Bazooka. Again, the uh, traditional 50th anniversary figure stand. The nice gold logo for the G.I. Joe. It's raised. And then the file name. Code name. Sorry. Uh, I think we're going to look at his weapons first here. Um, so first up, we have his bazooka. His actual bazooka for bazooka. His big old missile launcher. There's a lot of nice detail work in this thing. It looks very cool looking. Has a nice plastic handle here and a nice strap on it that's a different color than the main body. Nice shoulder pad there so when he throws it on his shoulder has a rest for it. So that's cool. Uh, then we've got these little missile here and they do stick in here. You just put them in place and uh, there's no like actual launcher mechanism on these things or anything but uh, they do fit in there and uh, luckily if you do put them in there they're not going to fall out and you're going to lose any of them like that but uh, nice that you can simulate some of that firing action there so that's cool so a very cool looking bazooka uh, speaking of these little missiles that we have Let's uh, jump to the backpack, I guess, first. <laughs> so, I think it's the traditional backpack he's always had, just in this nice blue color again to complement the rest of his color scheme. But it's got a lot of nice detail work on the pack itself, his canteen right there. It's got a nice carrying case for the actual missile launcher. It's kind of flimsy plastic, so you can kind of bend it easily enough to store the missile launcher here at the bottom. And then the other cool thing about this is these uh, missiles themselves just fit into the top here. You snap them in place and it's got a nice nifty storage bin for them. And again since it comes with four missiles 
there are four places for them. So pretty awesome. Uh, then the other accessory he's got here is uh, this shotgun, assault shotgun, I guess you could say. Got some nice de detail work in it as well. Looks very cool. Pretty straightforward. And then he comes with his helmet, which is uh, very cool looking. It's got a lot of nice detail work on it. You can see the folds in the fabric. The other cool thing about this helmet is that uh, this chin strap, it is able to actually fit and latch onto the helmet. There's a little hole right here in the side and this little peg on the end of the chin strap just fits and plugs right into that hole. You can get it to line up and snaps in place usually snaps in place yeah this one doesn't work too well but you could theoretically snap that in place and then uh, that would keep his helmet there we go well nope all right so the plastic is a little flim flimsy and uh, that doesn't stay in place very well but it's still a nice touch you can go and attach it to the helmet and keep his uh, chin strap on at the time so cool let's move on and look at the figure itself because uh, that's what we want to see um, this is a slightly updated version of the uh, original release it's got again nice blue camo color scheme which is um, a little different than I'm used to and it's a little off-putting to be honest with you but it doesn't look bad it just uh, doesn't exactly look like bazooka to me uh, beyond that he's got some new arms which makes him look a lot heavier a lot tougher than uh, the original release so that's always a welcome sign uh, a lot of nice detail work in uh, the bottom half here cool knee pads got some really cool looking things on his belt here as well and looking at the back it kind of carries forward uh, the jersey on the top is a little plain but you can see the zipper on it which is a nice little touch and he does have the uh, G.I. Joe gold star on his shoulder so that's very cool uh, his head looks a little odd to me I don't know if it's just mine or kind of looks like a bulldog to be honest with you but uh, still uh, articulation wise his head rotates all the way around and it does move up and down it uh, is slightly so the up and down movement is uh, not the best in the world on this and it kind of makes him look like he's uh, hunched over a little bit and kind of like he's looking down a lot which is not that good but we can deal with it uh, shoulder joint same as we're used to the elbow joint is the same and for his wrist joint it looks like he just has the rotation and not the uh, rocker on it but it still it works for what we need here uh, he's got the ab crunch feature here and waist twist at the same uh, leg articulation is pretty much the same as the rest of the Joes slightly hampered by his uh, belt here but not too bad then he's got uh, double knee joints actually no he only got a single knee joint So, single knee joint for Bazooka. And he actually does not have any ankle articulation whatsoever. So, yeah, just a single knee joint and uh, hip joint. 
which is kind of a shame because it's a really cool looking leg just uh, no articulation on it so that's too bad but it still looks really nice and take his helmet and stick it on him and it looks a little bit better with his helmet on then take his backpack it does plug in pretty easily there on his back kind of a large backpack so then you can take uh, his big old bazooka or you can take the shotgun itself and fit in his hands and arm him for battle he's ready to go so yeah, overall it's a uh, not a bad figure it's got a few uh, minor issues it looks like uh, the flimsy plastic on the helmet not that big of a deal since uh, it actually looks pretty cool with the uh, chin strap down so I'll not knock any points off for that uh, a little bit of a limited articulation so anyways that's a uh, that's Bazooka. Last but not least, we have Dusty. Again, the uh, traditional 50th anniversary figure stand. Codename and uh, raised and painted G.I. Joe logo. Uh, so this looks like to be just uh, pretty much a straight repaint of the one released for the Pursuit of Cobra. And unfortunately, I have not been able to pick that one up yet. So uh, it's, it's a new figure for me. How's that? Uh, but overall, the, the blue I had the same problem with Dusty as I do with Bazooka. And then to me, he's supposed to be a desert trooper. And the blue just doesn't work well for me in that case. Um, but that being said, once I can move beyond that, it's not a bad color scheme. Um, it makes sense in the sense of, you know, shadows and things like that. So if they're supposed to be like night troopers or something like that, I can see it working. But that's just me, so we'll move on from there. Uh, so let's take a look at his weapons first. Um, he's got two of these assault rifles. Uh, the first one here, it's got a very nice detail work on it. It's uh, similar to the original release that he had, but uh, different enough so that it's definitely not the same gun. But very nice looking. And he's got a slightly, uh, I don't know, bigger, different gun anyways here. It does seem to have the grenade launcher on it. But kind of similar style where we have the clips on the back side. Uh, a lot of nice detail work on it though, so it looks pretty cool. Uh, then he's got a single pistol. And this uh, machete looking knife. Which is pretty cool. Then we've got his uh, helmet here. Some nice detail work on it. It does look pretty nice. And we've got this cool set of goggles that uh, fit over top of the helmet. It's got that nice kind of yellow color scheme to it and see-through. So uh, that's pretty cool. It looks really nice paired together with the blue helmet. And he's got this crazy uh, scarf and cape thing so nice detail work in it we'll see how it works with the figure here in a few minutes but uh, let's look at the figure itself uh, so he's got this really big web gear stuff with a lot of pouches some extra magazines there's a knife sheath some other doodads on here more pouches it's a really nicely detailed vest 
And unlike Bazooka, I don't see the uh, 50th anniversary star stamp anywhere on him. But uh, I'm sure it's probably here somewhere. But he doesn't have sleeves, so that kind of makes sense. <laughs> um, his head looks a little weird. I think that's just because it's meant for this thing to go on there too. Maybe it'll fix itself here in a minute, but uh, articulation wise, uh, his head does go all the way around and pretty decent up and down motion. Uh, shoulder joints go around and up and down. Elbow joints, same thing. Spins and rotates. Uh, for his wrist joints, he simply has the rotational part. So no extra rock or anything in there. Same thing for the other side. And actually on his right hand, he does have the extra articulation in the wrist. So that's kind of weird that they did it for uh, one wrist but not the other one. Unless it just uh, maybe stuck, but nope, it's not. So they gave you one wrist with articulation and one without. Not that big a deal. Uh, he does have the ab crunch feature, which is a little bit limited by his big bulky uh, web gear. Leg wise, regular hip articulation. It is limited a little bit on this side by his uh, sheath for his web gear. The other side is not limited. Uh, then he has, he does have the double knee joint. Although the knee joint in this case seems uh, really loose. It shouldn't be moving from side to side like that. And the other one is uh, pretty much the same. Uh, that's a shame. Uh, then he has full articulation in the ankle, which is a little bit hampered by the uh, boot covers or the pant covers, pant legs, but not too bad. So all in all, pretty nice. There's a lot of nice detail work though, so I do appreciate that. It looks pretty cool. Uh, so let's go ahead and gear him up. So his big knife fits in here easily. No chance of coming out. So that's uh, always a plus. Uh, he does not have a place to put his pistol. So no pistol sheath or holster or anything like that. So you can kind of stick it I guess inside of the web gear like this, that would suffice for most things. Uh, then you can take either rifle and stick in his hand. It's a little tricky with that uh, magazine in the rear, so you may have to kind of put it in from the front here to begin with and twist it around to get him to hold it. But his thumb is uh, kind of getting in the way of that. There we go. And then his other gun can go in his other hand. That one actually fit a lot easier. Or so I thought. There we go. So yeah, you do have to put the gun on from the front side. Uh, then in order to put his cape on, you're going to have to pop his head off. So just grab it and twist and pull it off. And then you take the weird looking cape thing and stick on his shoulders and then replace his head. And voila! Uh, that does look a whole lot better actually. Uh, more proportioned. And it seems to fit pretty easily, so 
nice then we can take his helmet and stick on his helmet is a little bit loose on his head but uh, not too bad and there we go we've got dusty ready to roll overall it's not a bad figure it works still not crazy about the blue scheme but I like my dusty and uh, desert camo but hey it's not a bad figure so here are the three figures uh, together the blue works well with the gray for firefly so I'll give them that much um, the two characters though I'm still not crazy about this blue color scheme with uh, either of these two Joe figures um, it just doesn't exactly work well for me but I guess I can uh, give them credit for trying the blue I guess works better for Dusty than it does for Bazooka um, simply because I can see him in the desert at night blue would probably work pretty well uh, and again the bazooka figure is not a bad figure and the color scheme is not bad it's just it's blue <laughs> I don't know just weird uh, for size comparison I've got our handy dandy beachhead figure from the 25th anniversary line and you can see him here beside of Dusty, so he fits in very nicely with uh, everything. Uh, Bazooka is slightly bigger, so of course he is going to be slightly bigger. <laughs> so scale-wise, it looks pretty well on par with what I expect. And then uh, Firefly looks to be about the same size. So yeah, no, no major problems with scale or anything like that, so that's always nice. And overall, it's not a bad set. Uh, it's just, I don't know, maybe it's that Carolina blue stuff that I just don't like. I don't know, I'll get over it. But uh, yeah, overall it's not a bad set. A lot of cool accessories, a nice update to Bazooka, and that's pretty much what we got. So that's it for our review for the G.I. Joe 50th Anniversary 3-Pack Sneak Attack featuring Bazooka, Dusty, and Firefly. Overall, I'm still not sold on the blue coloring for the two figures. Dusty works a little bit better than Bazooka. Um, and the Firefly figure is pretty outstanding. So eh, I guess it'll be up to y'all if you to pick this, this particular set up. Um, Beyond just the color scheme itself, the figures themselves are very excellent and they are pretty cool. Uh, I do like the Firefly figure probably the most out of the set. The sculpting update for the Bazooka figure is really excellent. Uh, I just don't really like that blue color. I'm sorry, but I don't. Like I said, Dusty works a little bit better in the blue color, but um, it's still just a little bit off to me. And I guess that's just me and... I guess I'm a little bit more tied to the uh, traditional color schemes that these figures had back in the vintage line, so that's my biggest hang-up. Other than that, yeah, they're they're pretty cool figures, so you know if you can go ahead and pick this set up, it's pretty decent. Anyways, that's uh, pretty much all the time we have for today. So thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed this. Um, leave us some comments. Let us know what you think. Check out some of our previous videos. Stay tuned for some more interesting videos coming down the pipe. Uh, we've got some not only G.I. Joe related stuff, but some other odds and ends going to be trickling in. So, you know, subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. So you'll be the first on the line to uh, see those things when they come out. So that's pretty much it. So until next time, happy hunting and yo Joe.